You are all hereby found guilty of the crime of that bitch. I sentence you, bitch, to be burned at the stake until you are deemed fit to re-enter society. Fire it up, boys. See you in hell. Goodbye, mother. How horrible! If they're really witches, why don't they? It sounds like witch talk to me. Rochelle. Never mind. Another rousing round of votes came in thanks to the Patreon donators and YouTuber Live Super Chatter. Special thanks to contributors Lovable Tester, Florian Bibel, Brendan Costa, Emerald Wolf, Dancing Wolf, Zeno Salvador, Twilight Duck, Evolve This YouTube, Kylie Elizabeth, Grant Sicard, Mortal Destroy One, Super Saiyan Adam, Deja, and XX Shadow XX. Thanks to your contributions, I can keep these videos rolling. This week we have the overly dramatic, manic depressive, hasn't had a pedicure since the 90s, staying at home with a pint of ice cream and bottle of wine on Saturday night, lives in her underwear and close to diabetes only unplayable special infected herself, this week it's special infected profile, bitch, bitch, hey now, no need for the profane language, this week we're doing the witch. Coming in as the first female special infected to try and maul the survivors, she is the only infected the player cannot take control of. She is mostly a passive infected who will sulk to herself much like any angsty teen if they aren't already acting like the hunter. Even though she isn't playable, this doesn't take away from the sheer dangerous nature of her existence. Designed as a high risk infected, the survivors must avoid or feel the consequences. She served as the first infected Left 4 Dead fans would ever witness when the first trailer for Val's rendition of Left 4 Dead was released back in 2008. Crying and luring unsuspecting individuals into thinking a scared living woman or child was in need of help until a terrible fate awaited them. Appearing with pale, almost dead-like skin in a tattered assemblage of granny panties, Which wearing granny panties and a pajama bra. Her hair has turned grayish white but retaining its rather long length. Her eyes a sunken in widened out shape until a light reflects a red demonic gaze back at the survivor. Her physique actually pretty flimsy and more skeletal compared to her special infected counterparts which may be due to some medical and mental conditions that were amplified by the green flu outbreak. This magnification the root cause of her most noticeable physical and vocal qualities. Her nails growing to deadly lengths can either incapacitate or even kill a survivor in one swipe or proceed to tear them to shreds while they're down. She is also seen and heard constantly crying to herself. This constant sign of sorrowful crying may be due to a serotonin imbalance. Serotonin, the chemical triggered within the brain that we connect with happiness and due to the imbalance, the witch pre-infection would be suffering from clinical depression. Psychological trauma may also be severe enough to trigger the infection to transform a woman into the witch. Evidence of this occurring can be seen in the passing when the witch is seen at the altar crying to herself in a wedding dress. The mental distress of being left at the altar would mentally destroy the poor bride. Poor thing. Considering at the start of the infection, the witch was the only female special infected until the mutation developed enough to make the spitter and a female version of the boomer. But perhaps being a female heightens the chances of related hormones causing the infection as well as heightened chances of mental distress stress occurring, but there may be a different reason as to why the witch would be crying so frequently besides emotional and mental damage. She is seen to be somewhat anorexic even compared to common infected who are starting to show signs of malnourishment. Anorexia or some kind of eating disorder would cause a significant lack of fat which the infection would need to feed off the body's fat and muscle to not only thrive but survive. When a lack of body fat and muscle is occurring within a viral outbreak, the virus and even body itself will start tearing down vital organs just to keep the body working. Basically, your body is cannibalizing itself by destroying your muscle mass. In women, undernutrition often shuts down the menstrual cycle as the body tries to reduce energy expenditure. Bone density diminishes, causing severe amounts of pain. And since the green flu enhances all forms of a previous ailment, it would come to pass that the witch would feel these severe pains even worse, possibly even being the only infected to feel pain. No wonder she is crying. I'd be crying like a bitch. 
ranch. This explanation of anorexia and malnourishment would explain why the sugar mill in Hard Rain has such a high number of witches roaming around its quarters. Sugar is an easily digestible carbohydrate that can suffice for some kind of nutrition for the body to break down. The witch before becoming infected may also connect the sweet taste of the sugar to a small happiness it experienced during its possibly depressing life before. She adorns a set of razor sharp claws that can tear a survivor to shred within seconds and in the comics even rendered Lewis incapacitated to where he could barely even walk. Now in my what exactly is the infection in Left 4 Dead video, I asked people what may be the root cause of her drastic nail size and boy, I have been getting comments every day for the last 10 months. Some say that it's her anorexic symptoms causing the body to decay and in a deathly state the hair and nails would continue to grow since dead skin cells are what create both. But her anorexia would actually cause her hair and nails to become brittle. So being able to cut down a human with brittle nails doesn't seem plausible. Daily supplements for her eating disorders may have also promoted nail and hair growth and subsequently been strengthened by the green flu as a defense mechanism to evolve and adapt so she could defend herself against those who would prey on a seemingly helpless and sickly female infected. She became completely secluded and doesn't work in tandem with other infected or to actively hunt and kill uninfected individuals. She solely appears as a roadblock the survivors must either extinguish quickly or stealthfully sneak by. Either way, she is a high-risk individual that could do some major damage to a group of survivors, specifically one in her case. Her behavior and maneuverability change completely depending on the time of day. In the darkness of dusk till the break of dawn, she will stay in a depressive sitting position, maybe due to her previous uninfected self needing to rest during the nighttime. She will remain seated until a survivor approaches them, a light bathes them, or when guns are being fired close to her proximity. She will slowly rise up and begin to grunt and growl as she stares at the survivor who initially started to piss her off. Being sensitive to light and external sources, she will eventually stand up and reveal her claws to threaten the survivor. The witch has a very discernible musical score that follows her. The closer you are to her, the more you will hear a demonic child choir begin to chant. When she is attacking, that choir will begin to scream bloody murder. When day breaks, she will stand up on two feet and mope around aimlessly while shielding her face from either being seen or to protect her face from the sun's bright rays. Goths don't tan, homie. It's a bit harder for her to get pissed during daytime as she is less susceptible to flashlights and loud noises since daytime already is blaring the sun at her and daytime is usually a source of more noise to occur. She will still growl and fan her claws away from her face when she is irritated. When either she has had enough of the survivor being near her, light being on her when she is shot or hit by a grenade, the witch will have had enough and begin to chase the survivor that she was triggered by. The screen will show which player has startled the witch. She runs at about the same speed as the survivor under the influence of adrenaline. When she approaches her victim, she will proceed to swing her claw. Depending on the difficulty and setting, she will either down the survivor instantly or kill them in one fell swoop. Expert and realism will cause instant death, while advanced and below will just down a victim. When downed, she will proceed to just maul the person to death. If she isn't killed and succeeds in snuffing out a survivor, she will look both left and right at her surroundings as if she realizes she went into a blind and rage and then cover the back of her head and run away crying where she will eventually just disappear completely if running long enough. When the witch is in a full sprint, she will knock survivors away and cause them to stumble. If you stay in her way for too long, she will forget her original target and actually bring you down instead. Maybe because she got annoyed by the situation. I would be too. I hate when people walk slowly in front of me. The witch could proceed to attack a second target if she downs a survivor and then another survivor chucks a bile bomb or or Molotov at her, or hits her with incendiary rounds lighting her on fire. Although throwing a Molotov at a witch will reduce her running speed a little bit. Unless she is the wandering witch, then she will still run at the same speed. Combating the witch, everyone should be familiar with dispatching her in the quickest way possible. Taking a shotgun and promptly unloading it in the middle of her back or head would immediately kill her in what is known as crowning the witch. This maneuver can be successful unless you're playing real 
realism or expert difficulty. If you do end up pissing the witch off, you can run back to areas that she will not attack, like the safe room or a high perch, and she will give up on her chase. When you're playing as the special infected, you can see the witch spawn in a white silhouette that turns red when she is startled. Plan your next attack accordingly with the witch, since she has the power to instantly incap a survivor, or if you're playing realism versus, insta-kill them. If you're playing as the smoker, set up behind the witch and try pulling a survivor towards her. Even if you don't pull them a whole way, you have a chance at the survivors accidentally shooting her. Jockeys and chargers should attempt to steer survivors directly towards her to set her off. You can use the boomer's girth to conceal the witch completely. A survivor that sees you from far away will assume that they can get a clean kill and prevent anyone getting booned when actually blowing you up will trigger the witch. Be careful though, as sometimes the boomer's explosion can sometimes not set off the witch. Not only can special infected do well in forcing a survivor to approach her, they can also work well in defending her. Earlier I said a survivor can KO the witch by crowning her as a special infected try to run interference before they get close enough to kill her. Hunters fill this role pretty well since they can attack a survivor the fastest, but a charger and jockey and even smoker can do just as well. Hell, even a spitter can spit around the radius of the witch to deter the survivor from approaching. Also keep in mind if a survivor is anywhere even remotely close to her, try scratching her. This will elevate her rage meter and cause her to possibly even stand up and be ready to attack. That's some science and pro tips on yo girl, but let's give her more than just the tip and see what kind of trivia we can dig up. The Bride Witch on the passing will have a very creepy rendition of the song Here Comes the Bride, and if you startle her, a horde will spawn of zombies and tuxes, maybe her angry family reception thinking you're the man that left her on the altar? You can also piss the Bride Witch off without approaching her or attacking her. If you play the sound system near her, the changing of the Here Comes the Bride song to a Midnight Rider song will trigger her. In the beta tests of the game, once startled, the witch would originally try killing the entire survivor team, but Valve cut this as it was way too difficult and frustrating for a team to try to combat. And I can actually see somebody accidentally shooting her and everyone screaming at the original offender. She also originally had darker underwear and black hair, but white hair is edgier and more realistic anyways. Despite wandering witches spawning exclusively in daytime levels, the finales of both Dead Center and Swamp Fever will only spawn sitting witches despite it still being in broad daylight. She is also the root cause of a lot of wet dreams from sick individuals. That about covers the witch this time around. Was there something I missed? Did you have a piece of trivia or factoid you wanted to add? Let me know in the comments or you can correct me. I don't always get everything correct, especially health condition wise. If you enjoyed the video, throw a like my way and subscribe for more profiles and even best of moments and coaching segments to help you sharpen your Left 4 Dead 2 versus gameplay. If you're already subscribed, hit the bell by the sub button so you are guaranteed to see my videos as they release. Don't cry! I'll be back next Friday with another Special Infected Profile voted by Patreon and Super Chat donators, so donate and you can vote. Until next time, I'm Zach Ass of Wild Such Gaming. Stay wow! I got it! Ooh. Come on, attack! Oh my god, she's been around. Fucking what? what? Oh, she reset! She fucking reset! Myself up.